I feel like I should have seen this coming, but last week when I asked if there was any particular topic he would like me to speak about when it comes to Dungeons & Dragons, overwhelmingly, most people said, how do I get started, and or, what is it? So I'm going to try my best to answer both, and this might be a little long-winded because there's a lot to explain. First off, if you don't know what Dungeons & Dragons is, it's a tabletop role-playing game where you and your friends are collectively telling a story. Uh, some players are the player characters, the heroes, and then at least one person, I mean, there's one person, is the dungeon master. The dungeon master is everything else. So you have, uh, you have a, a piece of paper and it shows all your stats, all of your equipment, all your damage rolls, your hit points, all this stuff you would normally see in an RPG. Only the things that you do are only limited to your imagination. Whatever you think of that you want to do, you can do it. Like it is the ultimate open world RPG. There are no limitations, there are no uh, mechanical or uh, technological restrictions or anything. Like if you can think of something and you can make it work, do it. All you have to do is roll the die and hope it lands properly to see if it succeeds. That's Dungeons and Dragons. Now, to, to, to give you a better idea of how this actually works or how it looks, there's a couple of resources you can look at online to... You can you can kind of watch a game to get some uh, something of an idea. Um, I personally really like the uh, Penny Arcade Acquisitions Incorporated videos uh, that they do at PAX East and PAX Prime every year. It's like the Penny Arcade dudes playing with uh, Chris Perkins, one of the lead designers of Dungeons and Dragons. So he's a really good DM. Uh, and that will give you a really strong idea of how Dungeons and Dragons works, and it's also very, very entertaining. Uh, another option out there is uh, I actually played some Dungeons and Dragons with my close friends last year and put it up on my gameplay channel. So if you want, you could watch how I played D&D on my gameplay channel. That was when 5th edition had just come out, so we were still kind of like stumbling through it and didn't quite have all the rules down or anything. And it's not exactly uh, high quality production value, values or anything because I didn't try that hard, but it's there if you want to see it. Anyway, watch those. That will give you a really strong idea of what D&D is and how it works. Uh, but, but the game as a whole is so freeform and anything can be changed or adapted to your play style that that's what makes it so wonderful. Anything that's in that rule book, you can change. If you don't like it, change it. I mean, make sure it's okay with the other players in your DM first, or if you're the DM, make sure it's okay with your players. But you can change it. So that's, that's basically it. It's players dropped into this world. Uh, with the dungeon master controlling the world around them as these players do whatever they want. Now very specifically, I want you to, this is another really key point that a lot of people forget. It's not the players versus the DM. The DM is just there to react and control everything around you. It's not the DM is trying to kill the players and the players are trying to stop the DM. That's not the case. You guys are working together to tell a really cool story. Cool? Cool. That's probably about as succinct as I can possibly make that without getting really in-depth, but that's basically D&D. It's all in your mind, uh, unless you're doing combat encounters with a map and minis in front of you to move around. Uh, I like to do that. But it takes place in your mind, all in your imagination, just very, very cool storytelling. How do you get started? Well, have friends. Oh, but that's hard. Oh, I know, but there are other solutions to that as well. Dungeons & Dragons is a game that's better with multiple people playing with friends. Um, at least... At least three people? I mean, that's on the low side. Uh, I usually recommend having a one Dungeon Master and anywhere between three to five players. If you don't have that much, well, that's fine. You can adjust things around that. But try to have a small group of friends that you can all get together and play. If you know absolutely nothing and just like don't even know where to start but want to be taught things, uh, there is a couple of options. One, like I said, you could watch the uh, gameplays and streams that other people have done and you'll probably be able to pick up on some things from that. Um, two, find your local 
card game shop, comic shop, or whatever it is, uh, a lot of these places do um, weekly D&D encounters, which is like a sort of D&D league where you just uh, meet up every week or every other week or whatever it is with your character, uh, meet some friendly strangers and a friendly stranger DM, and then you just play through a really quick adventure. And a lot of these people are very, very welcoming to new players. And it's all free. Like, it's always free to play and come check out, just to at least get you interested in the game. So if you, again, if you don't have any friends to actually play with, and you, but you still want to learn with some hands-on time, you can try doing that. It means you're going to have to go outside and be social, and that's scary, I know, but d and is also a very social game. So you can look into those uh, encounters. It's a very, very... Um, basic version of what Dungeons and Dragons can be, but that at least gets your foot wet and, you know, points you in the right direction. Uh, the other thing that I would actually highly recommend is, and I've actually talked about this before, is the Dungeons and Dragons starter kit. This thing's actually pretty great. This came out for 5th edition, and this has everything you need to get started playing D&D with yourself and your friends. Uh, again, just to get started. This only costs like $20, but I'm pretty sure you can get it cheaper on Amazon. I think it's like 12 bucks on Amazon. And it's a hell of a deal for $12. Uh, it comes with a full set of dice, really nice dice, uh, a couple of maps, pre-made characters, and uh, uh, a, couple, a smaller rule book, and some uh, pre-made adventures right in there. So if you don't know anything, this is a great way to learn how to dungeon master, how to play, and how to look at characters, or whatever. Um, I, I actually really do like recommend this because I like this one a lot. Like this is like this is the starter rule book. It's you know not as much in here as say that thing, but this is all you need to know to get started. And then if you find this almost too limiting, and you're not a fan of the pre-made characters and still want to make your own, you can find basic rules uh, online for free from the wizards website uh, for the player's manual and the dungeon master guide it's several pages out of the actual books uh, and condensed but again just enough there to kind of get you started these things are great uh, I really recommend this to anyone especially since it comes with the Lost Minds of Fandelver adventure book I gotta say excellent adventure book excellent adventure book even if you're not new starting with this not a bad way to go. It's really, really, really well done. It's made it so that it's not super linear. You can open up and go to different places at different times, and it's uh, it's excellent. Really, really well done. I was very, very impressed by this. This is what, actually what we play over on my uh, uh, gameplay channel when we're trying to learn how 5th edition works. So, this starter kit, excellent way to start out. Not super expensive, and that way you actually get the uh, something of a true tabletop experience into there. Now from there you can decide if you really want to get into it. That's when you start buying the core rule books. If you want to do that, if you just want to play, all you need is the player's handbook. Uh, and if you want to be a dungeon master, I recommend having the player's handbook, the dungeon master's guide, and the monster manual. It does get a little more pricey if you do that, but that's also what you need. It, it is what you need if you want to really start kind of diving deep into it. And then there's other things like dice and uh, a, a map if you want to do that. Figures or minis if you're into that but you don't need to. You can use anything. All options. Um, now, like I said earlier, if you don't have friends around you to play with, you can go to the D&D Adventures Guide. Or there are numerous ways these days to play online. In fact, that's pretty much what I have to do these days because me and my close D&D buddies that I've always grown up with no longer live in the same city or the same state. So we just hop on Skype and find a uh, online virtual tabletop and we play using that. There's a couple of good ones out there. Roll20 is excellent. Uh, you can do a free account uh, and play on there. But you can also pay for uh, uh, better features on there. Roll20 is excellent. Uh, one I've been kind of messing around with is a program called Fantasy Grounds on Steam. Uh, it takes a little bit of setting up, but it seems really, really good. Downside is it's quite expensive for what it is. 
but it's another option. And if you don't have a whole lot of time, you can pay money to like get a bunch of pre-made adventures already into it and ready to go. Just another option out there. So there, there are other ways to play aside from making everyone at the table. You can do it online through Skype or whatever. Uh, in fact, a lot of these places like Roll20 or online communities like, um, uh, I don't know, Reddit probably, uh, will say, hey, who wants to play online? I just want to get some people together and they're doing like open sessions and you just be like, I'll sign up and I'll try. Just another option out there for you. So there are ways of getting started and getting, and getting going on it. It doesn't have to be, oh, buy all the rule books and buy all these things and then sit down and play. Burr. There are other solutions first. Um, the easiest way to learn how to play is find someone who already knows how and have them teach you. Uh, especially like hands-on wise. Even just going through like the character creation, you'll learn a lot just by going through the character creation. So I, I probably won't do a video like that myself just because that's very hard to convey through video form properly and it'll take a long time but there are other ways and of course you don't have to do like the newest uh fifth edition if you really want to get started like you can go through and try some of the other rule books you can try the 3.5 rule books you can try the fourth edition if you want to uh i don't recommend that one as much as the others but that's out there uh you could try pathfinder which has uh, basically one core rule book for much cheaper than anything else and that'll get you on your way as well. So you don't have to get the latest and greatest. I recommend the latest and greatest because I like it a lot but uh, 3.5 and Pathfinder those are absolutely options you can do too. Cool? Cool. I, I think that's the best w uh, yeah that's all I can really say for how to get started is Try the starter kit if you really want to play it yourself with some friends who all know nothing and just really want to see how it goes. Uh, watch some online things to kind of get a feel for how it's supposed to go. And uh, try to go into the, the uh, RPGA, uh, the D&D Adventurers League at your local comic card shop uh, just to try it out. So hopefully that at least gets you on your way. And you know what? I really hope you do try it. Because I think a lot of people would really, really like it if they weren't so, if they weren't so scared. So, that being said, good luck to you. I hope you like it. I know I do.